What's going on YouTube? Hayden here. Today I'm going to talk about something car dealers never tell you. The truth about brake and oil changes. As you can see, this is my brand new 2025 Mazda CX-50 Hybrid. And when I bought it, the finance manager told me exactly what you've probably heard before. You don't need a brake and oil change anymore. These engines use new technology, just change it every 10,000 miles. Sounds great, right? Modern technology, low maintenance, less hassle. But here's the thing, it's not the full story. In this video, I'm going to expose why manufacturers are saying this, what's really going on inside your brand new engine during break-in, and I'll show you lab results from my very own Mazda that prove early oil changes are still important if you care about long-term reliability. When I picked up this car, the dealer told me the first oil change is at 10,000 miles, but because I bought it from them, they'll do the first two oil changes free, one at 5,000 and one at 10,000 miles, depending on how hard I drove the vehicle, whether I used it for towing. When I questioned him about brake and oil changes, he said there's no need for a brake and oil change because Toyota and Mazda engines are made differently now. And that's what most people are told. No matter if it's Mazda, Toyota, Honda, BMW, or Ford, everyone pushes the same narrative. Today's engines are built with advanced materials and precision machining. Brake and oil changes are a thing of the past. These long intervals are for the manufacturer's best interest, not yours, and certainly not your engines. And when I say brake and oil change, I mean changing the oil and filter somewhere between the first 500 and 1,000 miles. So let's talk about why the car industry changed its tune. It pretty much comes down to marketing and the cost of ownership. You see, when a company can advertise 10,000 mile oil changes, it makes the car look cheaper to maintain. That helps sell leases and new cars, less maintenance, and less hassle for you and the dealer. And it also has warranty limitations. Manufacturers only need the engine to survive through the warranty period, usually 60,000 to 100,000 miles, depending on the manufacturer and the car. And after that, it's pretty much all your problem. And then there's the whole environmental optics. We have emissions, everyone chasing the best MPG. And if you think about it, fewer oil changes look good for emissions and waste reduction. It's partly about image, not necessarily about longevity. And then the other thing they throw at me is that these new modern engines are machined more precisely than ever, which might be true, but that doesn't mean there's zero break and wear. Metal still has to mate, seal, and polish. I don't care how new or advanced your machining skills are. There's always debris left over in any machining process, no matter how advanced it is. Now when it came to doing the oil change, I use 0W16 full synthetic oil, which is Mazda's specified viscosity and OEM filter. The convenient thing is the Mazda CX-50 hybrid setup makes it extremely easy to do an oil change, very similar to the Toyota RAV4 hybrid. Access is from below with a skid plate, standard drain plug, and a normal can style oil filter. Once drained, I collected the sample in a sterile speed diagnostics bottle, labeled it, and shipped it off. If you've never done this before, it's it's extremely easy. You can order a test kit, fill it during your next oil change, and you'll learn more about your engine than any dealership will ever tell you. So the next thing I'm probably gonna do is drive the car around another 3,000 to 4,000 miles, and right around 4,500 to 5,000 miles, I'll change the oil again and send another sample to the lab. Now here's something most people don't realize. Another big reason braking oil changes went away is because people just flat out stopped doing them. Back when automakers used to recommend early oil changes at around 500 to 1,000 miles, most buyers either forgot to do it, ignored it, or just didn't wanna be bothered going back to the dealer so soon after buying or leasing a new car. And then when the problems came up later, those same customers blamed the manufacturer for their problematic car. So instead of fighting customer behavior, the manufacturers just quietly removed the recommendation altogether and stretched the interval to 10,000 miles. Because guess what? Short-term better MPG is better than long-term engine and car reliability. They don't really care what happens to the car after the warranty period. If it lasts only 100K miles, well, it not only lasts 100K, even though it could get 200, 300, sometimes even 400,000 miles. So like I said, the manufacturer just quietly removed the recommendation altogether and stretched the interval to 10,000. Problem solved only for them. And then there's one more behind the scenes reason nobody talks about. When cars go through emissions and fuel economy testing, or when journalists get them for reviews, which is extremely popular in 2025, they're tested right out of the factory 
right off the dealership lot with that original oil that's in the car. Now think about it, if the car had break-in oil that needs to be changed at 500 miles, it could mess with the missions results, artificially show worse MPG, or just cause reviewers to call it a high-maintenance vehicle. That would hurt scores, it would hurt sales, and certification data. So what's the easy solution here? Just don't call it break-in oil, and don't even put break-in oil in it to begin with. Don't mention early oil changes and just tell people it's fine for 10,000 miles because most people hop into new cars every three years anyway. So essentially the 10,000 mile interval isn't wrong, it's just the bare minimum to meet warranty expectations, not to make your engine last 200,000 miles, which it most certainly could on these vehicles. When an engine is new, a lot happens in those first few hundred miles. Piston rings are seating against the cylinder walls, bearings, bushings, and valve guides are still wearing in, and sealants and gaskets are still curing. And typically, microscopic machining debris, casting sand, and assembly residue are still present from the factory in the engine, and all of that ends up in your oil. And yes, there is a filter, but filters don't catch everything. They mostly stop particles larger than maybe 20 to 30 microns. The smaller stuff, five to 10 microns, stays suspended and keeps circulating, acting like liquid sandpaper in your engine. So while your car seems to be running perfectly fine, that break-in debris is quietly polishing away at internal surfaces. But don't believe my words, I have the proof. I decided to test all of this myself. At 507 miles, I drained the factory fill on my CX-50 hybrid, took a sample, and sent it to Speed Diagnostics, a lab that specializes in oil analysis. I didn't just want opinions, I wanted real, hard facts and data, and that's what I got. So here's what came back. Copper was at 39 ppm, elevated from new bearings and bushings. Aluminum was at 17 parts per million ppm from pistons and cylinder bores. Silicon high from sealants, casting residue, or just dust. And then the viscosity was surprisingly below grade. The oil had already thinned out that early on, just 500 miles in. The wear rate was also 142 ppm per 1,000 miles, which is high but also typical for break-in. And the best part, even the lab noted that the viscosity is below grade, along with elevated levels of silicon, copper, and wear rate, typical for new engine break-ins, and recommended that I resample on the next oil change within 3,000 to 4,000 miles. Now, that's not me saying this, that's a professional lab confirming that even in 2025, brand new oil still gets contaminated early on. So yeah, I did the first oil change at 507 miles. Mazda didn't require it. The dealer said not to bother with it, but after seeing this data, why would I let that stuff keep circulating until 10,000 miles in my engine? That's like rinsing a new pan, seeing metal flakes come off of it and saying, eh, it's still fine. I'll actually wash it maybe in a year. If things are normal, then I should see copper and aluminum dropping significantly, silicon cut in half, or better, and the wear rate trending down sharply. That's pretty much how I'll confirm the engine is fully settling in. So why don't manufacturers tell you this? Because from their point of view, it just doesn't matter. If the car runs fine through the warranty period, then they've done their job. They're not planning for 200,000 mile owners. They're planning for lease returns, three-year trade-ins, and a service department that gets you back for maintenance packages. But people like me, and probably you if you're watching this video, want our cars to last well past that warranty period, and the $50 it cost me to do the oil change early in the car's life is pretty much cheap insurance to help make that happen. So let's be real, the no break-in oil change narrative that the dealers tell you is very convenient. It makes it sound like engineering has completely eliminated wear, but oil analysis proves otherwise. We literally have the proof. Even the cleanest, most modern engines, hybrid or not, shed metal in the first few hundred miles. And if you leave that oil in for 10,000 miles, some people even 12,000 miles, it just keeps circulating that sandpaper. The car, yes, will still run fine, sure, in the beginning, but over time, this adds up to slightly more wear, slightly more blow-by, and slightly less protection. And 100,000 miles later, slightly turns into significant compounding over time. So if you're watching this video and you just bought a new car, here's my advice. Change the factory oil early between 500 to 1,000 miles. If you want it, push it to 1,200 miles, 13, 
it's not the worst thing. Change it again after another 4,000 miles to flush out the rest, whatever debris you didn't get the first time. And then if you want, send the sample to the lab if you're curious, the data doesn't lie. And after that, move into your normal 5,000 mile schedule, even if the manual says 10,000. It also really makes me consider what the mileage intervals we should do the other fluids in the car, coolant, transmission fluid, but that's for another video. So if you follow these maintenance intervals, you'll be rewarded with cleaner internals, lower wear trends, and better long-term reliability. So guys, at the end of the day, you don't have to take my word for it. The lab results say enough. My oil at 507 miles had real metal and residue in it. Modern engines, yes, they are amazing, but physics hasn't changed. Metal still meets metal and oil still carries the leftovers. So the next time somebody says, you don't need a break in oil change, you can smile and say, sure, if you're only planning to keep the car until the warranty period ends. But if you want it to last beyond that, take care of it from mile one. Now, if I'm feeling up for it, I'll post a follow-up video when I get my next sample back at around 3,000 to 4,000 miles. So make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see those results. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And remember, taking care of your engine early pays off later. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.